the Glorious Revolution 1688 and they asked, was it just a Protestant coup? I think it was, he thinks it wasn't, and we have, a, have a, an argument about it, but we talk to historians about it and we, we bring a bit of light-heartedness to it, there's a few sketches, there are some, some proper arguments, we then talk to historians and we try to reach some sort of conclusion, and we've, we've been doing this for five or six series and it's really, really enjoyable, we're, we're getting better at it as we go along, and also I think we're, we're feeding into it, into a debate, we're opening up history to people, history is very controversial, people take it very seriously, I think what, what I've learned from this a lot of people think history is black and white. It's never black and white. It's always far grayer than you think. It's rarely about events. Events tend to be processes. I mean, you were right. We're celebrating the centenary of Northern Ireland today, the technical centenary. But you could argue that Northern Ireland had about five birthdays with the, the Government of Ireland Act of 1920 right up until the, the Boundary Thank Commission Commission in 1925. You know, there are all sorts of different events. And it was a process rather than a one-off event. So we found, uh, I think uh, David would agree with me, and we very rarely agree to be honest, but I think he would agree with me that, you know, the, 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 you know, you find your heroes in history have have clay feet, the, the villains aren't as villainous as you thought, and that, you know, we, we there are there are more narratives than, than single narratives, and I think that, that's very important. And have you been surprised by anything you have learned or discovered while you were researching this current series of The Long and Short of It? Well, I had a great time. We talked to Paul Bew about Winston Churchill in Ireland, uh, and Churchill I knew had had some. I knew a bit about sort of the uh, the black and tans and things like that. But he actually had a very long relationship with Ireland. And Paul Bew, the the historian, and the, uh, was was really really good on, on providing perspective. On uh, I didn't know an awful lot about him. It's 1688, the the Glorious Revolution again. Um, that's seen by many unions as as particularly to at the time it brought in uh, civil and religious liberty for all the very different perspectives on that but there are very good reasons as to why that revolution came about and so there are all sorts of bits and pieces i did we did one last year about the siege of Derry and whether lundy deserves to be burnt every uh, december that they or august is it that they burned the uh, lundy uh, sorry i think it's december and uh, i discovered uh, that he, he, he i think poor man's been framed i don't think he deserves to be a traitor at all and even unionists are a bit wonky about whether and how bill mc was so it's a wee bit, um, like you don't have to go and read the book if you have the long and the short of it, you can just d tap in there, delve in, you've done all the hard work and uh, draw your own conclusions after listening to 30 minutes of debate about a particular subject. Well, exactly. I mean, it's partly educational. Well, we're delighted to say that, uh, that the BBC is going to keep some of the series, including this one, on sounds, BBC sounds, uh, in perpetuity. Right. And that some schools are using them, genuinely are using them as, as a resource. And it's a good introduction. I mean, I think what we bring is, we, we bring a light touch. As I say, there's a bit of humour. There's proper arguments. I mean, I'm, David Hume and I are, are having real arguments. We're not, we're not, there's a little bit of showbiz, obviously, but we're not pretending he is, comes from a unionist perspective. I come from a different perspective. The arguments are real. But and often we find that you know our own views are uh, are, doing, uh, are worthy of challenge and can be and we can come to you know, there's some agreement on some things. And and I that's part of it. What about the audience? You know, what about our, the, the society, Tim? Do you think that we have a, an appetite for history? I mean, obviously, you're hoping that uh, we will be very interested in the subject you're selling. But I wonder, you know, do we want to learn about new perspectives and have a better understanding of the past? I think that's changing. I think it's certainly changing in, in recent years, and I think that there are far more uh, there are far more perspectives out there. I think it's one, one small interesting fact: we've done six or seven series, uh, and this it seems disgraceful, but up in the first couple of series, we found it quite hard to get women historians. But there are now far more female historians. We've got the likes of Marie Coleman, Laura McAtacky contributing to this series, and there seem to be far more of them out there. And I don't know if that's our recent phenomenon, or we're being, it's our fault, and we were we were too late to that. But I think there's a Lot more, uh, there are a lot more views on history now, and a lot more people indulging in history and enjoying history and coming at it from different perspectives. And I think that the more people talk about it, the more people read, the more people discuss and debate, then that stops people having a view that you know history is one thing and that's it, and that Irish history is one linear line of 800 years of British oppression, we have to do X, Y to stop it. Uh, and those, those perspectives, I think, are, 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 uh, are, are all worthy of challenge. I, I'm just I'm standing in the studio, just nodding my head along to absolutely everything you're saying because I, I like yourself Tim I studied history at school I had a phenomenal history teacher Mr Donoghue if he's still li if he's, uh, listening this afternoon he was brilliant that's amazing because that's exactly the same here Sean Corrigan my history teacher was the person who inspired me and even now I still remember you know you, you remember teachers who just you know uh, make you want to read more and, and yeah. delve more into it yeah absolutely and uh, his words were 
always prove it. Whatever you say, prove it. Uh, never, <laughs> never make throwaway comments. Always prove it. And that's why I'm really, really fascinated. And I'm also fascinated at how you managed to squeeze so much into half an hour, Tim. Like you are having big conversations here. You're discussing massive um, events in history. And you know, Ch Churchill and Ireland discussed in half an hour. You know, that's a yeah. whole module in university, Tim, squeezed into half an hour. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And we'll be, I mean, next week's program, I think, is was Home Rule, Home Rule, which is obviously very relevant to today. Yeah. I just didn't know where I'd come about the whole campaign against Home Rule. Um, and I think, you know, from my perspective, when, when I was at school, I was I came from a Catholic, Catholic school, and we got a sort of, you know, we got Daniel O'Connell, Parnell, Bloody Blah, right up the home. But it was always the perspective of, you know, like that good father Ted, you know, flipping Protestants up to no good as always, stopping us having a nice home room. And it's far more complicated than that. There are reasons why people act the way they do in 2021. And it's a lot to do with history. It's a lot to do with 100 years ago. Absolutely. But one other thing I should mention, we, we, maybe in the other, uh, we're slightly, uh, uh, we're always looking at ourselves and think we're, we're the most important people. We have to remember there were lots of partitions all over Europe. There are lots of movement. Turkish borders don't stay the same all the time. So also think there, there needs to be some sort of international perspective as well on a lot of these things. Yeah, which is very, very important. But um, this is a really, really good start starting point for anyone who wants to discover more um, on any of these subjects. So far, um, you mentioned the Glorious Revolution 1688 has been discussed so far this series. The United Irishmen were they always doomed to fail. Um, and again, that was my whole A-level done in half an hour there, Tim. And uh, <laughs> this week is home rule. Was that really Rome rule? So that's coming up on the long and short of it. It continues this Saturday, half past 12 on BBC Radio Walter and in Catholic. Thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you.